Good morning. Today I'm looking at Psalm 1, which is a beautiful psalm, and it ha there is so much wisdom in it, as there is in all scripture, and we do well to take notice of the advice of this first of the psalms. Psalms is a wonderful book. It has so much in it to help us. There are psalms which are written when the person, the writer, David perhaps, or, Sol or Solomon, one of the writers, um, is desperate for help from God and doesn't know where to turn. And those psalms are very helpful when we feel very upset or low. But this psalm is just general advice to start with. What a good place to start in understanding, as the psalmist does, that there is good and evil in our world. There are good people and there are bad people. Now I'm not saying that means salvation for those who are good and damnation for those who are evil. But um, when we come to faith uh, and we turn to Jesus and we know our sins are forgiven, it would be silly, it would be foolishness to continue in the way that we lived before we knew God. Because when we know how much love God loves us and how much he paid for us, we also know that we don't want to live our lives hurting him. We don't want to take advantage of what Jesus did for us. We don't want to say, as some of the readers of Paul's letter to the Romans, when they understood that all their sins were forgiven, past, present and future, that um, nothing they did would make God love them any more and nothing they did would make God love them any less. So what did they do? Some of them, they, they decided to indulge themselves and to do whatever they pleased. Because surely that would mean that the grace of God would be glorified if they were really wicked and they were still saved. But that's not the When we know how much God has given so that we might be part of his kingdom, then we want to live our lives in the way he meant them to be lived. And this book, I've often said it before, you'll know it. My thought is that this book is like the user manual of a complicated piece of machinery, perhaps like a car or, or I don't know, like an aeroplane. And this book tells you how to get the best out of, out of the human life and how to damage it. And warning, when, you know, when we do certain things, it's not that God punishes us, it's that we open the door for the enemy to take advantage. So I've diverted a bit, but Psalm 1, Blessed is the man or woman who walks in the counsel of the wicked, who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so. And then it goes on to talk about the wicked perishing. This um, walk, stand and sit of the first verse is very important because what it's saying to us is be careful how you live your life. Be careful what you spend time doing the counsel of the wicked, walking in the counsel of the wicked. You know, when we are making decisions in our life, when we're thinking about what we should do and how we should do it, who do we go to for advice? Who do we ask? Whose counsel do we seek? Is it the counsel of those who love the Lord? Or is it the counsel of those who don't love the Lord? Who are, in inverted commas, wicked now, this may be family members, this may be long, lifelong friends, but they are not Christians. If they're not Christians, their counsel may not be from God, may not be wise. So, listening to the counsel of those who don't love the Lord is, is dangerous, because they, they, they won't be hearing from the Lord what he wants you to do. Standing in the way of sinners. You know, who, what company do we keep? Who do we spend our time with? Now, there's a sense in which 
we, don't, we, we as Christians, we don't want to take ourselves out of the world and not mix with people because we want to get them saved. But we have to be careful, uh, you know, who we, who we spend our time with, what company we keep. Sitting in the seat of scoffers. Scoffers are people who laugh at important things. And there are many people in our world, yours and mine, who if we talk to them about spiritual things, they laugh at us, they think we're fools. They think we've lost it, lost the plot. They certainly don't value the values that we have in the way that we do. And the thing is that what we listen to, what we read, what we watch on the, on the media, what we listen to on YouTube, <laughs> I hope you're listening to me, but what we tune into, what films we watch, we have to be careful because there's a lot of it is, ve well, most of it is unwise and tainted with human thinking. We have to be careful. So what is the right way to do it? The first thing to do is to value this book above all else, to value this book, the Bible, to value it, to learn from it, to love it, to listen to its advice. And that most topics are covered in this book. All right, you won't find anything in there about media or about computers or about television or about, about mobile phones but there's a lot about the human condition has not changed and there are principles in this book that we do well to absorb into our lives and to meditate on day and night so when you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't sleep meditate on the verse or pray you'll soon fall asleep and you become like a tree planted by streams of water, a tree that will never dry out, a tree that will always be fruitful, always have leaf and never wither. And in everything you do, you will prosper because that's the purpose of God for you, is that you prosper, that you are blessed that you are blessed not just in this life, but eternally. Blessed with his presence, blessed with his guidance, blessed with his wisdom, blessed with his life, and blessed with his future. Psalm 1. Have a great day. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.